Risky Behavior. Yo, what's up, man? How y'all doing? Welcome to Risky Behavior. Um, thank you for joining me today. Today, I have a question. Because it's something that I'm starting to see more and more. When I was growing up, I don't remember it being openly talked about. But now people are a lot more comfortable with this particular thing. I don't have really, really strong feelings towards it. I think because of how I grew up, I disagree with it. But I did want to ask the question. And as I always do, when I ask a question and I ask people to comment their answers, I present a video as a example. So the question for this particular video is, is it okay for a pastor or priest or minister to be gay? If yes, why? If no, why? Um, so I kind of just randomly typed it into Google. Just being funny, seeing if I can get an answer or not. And I did. And. I guess it kind of gave me a. A different perspective that made it seem like. Uh, well, I was going to say not so bad, but it's still pretty bad to me. Like I said, the way I grew up I, to me, I, I don't accept it, but hey, whatever. So. When I looked it up, this is what it said. Yes, a pastor can be gay. Sexual orientation and pastoral ministry are distinct aspects of a person's identity and vocation. <coughs> Excuse me. The question of whether a gay person can serve as a pastor largely depends on the specific beliefs and doctrines of the religious denomination or church in question. Many Christian denominations have traditionally held conservative views on sexuality, often prohibiting openly gay individuals from serving in clergy roles. However, attitudes and policies have been changing in some denominations, and there are now several that affirm and ordain LGBTQ plus individuals as pastors and clergy members. These denominations often interpret biblical teachings on sexuality in a more inclusive way and advocate for the full participation of LGBTQ plus persons in the life of the church. For example, denominations like the United Church of Christ, the Episcopal Church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and the Presbyterian Church USA are examples of Christian denominations in the United States that ordain openly gay pastors provided they meet the other qualifications for ministry. Other denominations and religious organizations, however, may still prohibit openly gay individuals from serving as pastors or may require celibacy for those who are gay. It's important to note that this is an area of ongoing debate and change within many religious communities around the world. Okay. So. And after reading that, you know, One thing that stood out to me, though, is 
when they said, well, some of them may let you serve, but they just require celibacy. And that was kind of, for me, like a different way to look at it because I do believe that all sin is the same. And I believe all people have sin in them. So if someone is willing to not um, participate in their sin because they may cannot. I'm just saying they might can't help who they are attracted to. But as long as they don't participate, then I guess technically they're not sinning. So I guess that part when it says, well, hey, if they practice celibacy, they can serve. You know, but I, I just think that um, your sexuality is such a big part of you. I think I think you can do other jobs in the church, but I think being the pastor is such a big role and to have a pastor up there that is just openly gay to me is it's just a big deal for me. It's a big hurdle for me to try to uh get over, but So I um I thought about that because I was watching some older some old clips of Jesse Lee Peterson's show The Fallen State and it got me thinking like how do I really how do I really feel about this? Or do I even really care at all? You know what other people do? Cuz I think I'm getting to the age now where it's kind of like I don't even know if I care anymore I know I'm not going to participate in it but if other people want to hey whatever so I was going to play a little bit of this clip as an example it's a priest on here he's on Jesse Lee Peterson's show and he's openly gay seems like a nice guy you know whatever um I'm a little confused because I thought only Catholic priests were called no, father. Any, uh, well, it's a funny thing. Uh, you have priests and you have ministers, right? right. So all, all priests are also ministers, but a priest is somebody who celebrates Mass or celebrates the Eucharist. Is the, is, oh. uh, and not all churches do that, right. right? How do you feel when people call you father? Uh, it depends on who's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> are you like, I'm not old enough to be your father? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming. And see, at this point, it's like, I don't think Jesse, at, well, Jesse at this point doesn't know he's gay. And for me, you know, I watched it already, so I know he is gay. That joke he just did when he said, do you like when people call you father? He said, depending on who's doing it, I take that joke differently. Like, I'm like, what he mean by that? You know, like. He's chuckling, and and even when Jesse made his little joke after that, he kind of chuckled like he has no idea what I'm talking about, right? That's how the priest was chuckling after Jesse said, like, uh, you know, I'm not old enough to be your father. He chuckled because I don't, in his mind, he knows that Jesse doesn't get why he's saying what he's saying when he said it depends on who's calling me father. I I think he was making a dirty joke. That's just me personally. I think that's what he was doing. Coming. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Are you called by God to be a uh, a priest, or are you? Is it something you volunteer to do? It's uh, you feel a calling, right? And so uh, in my case, I felt a calling deep within me. This happened after many years. I was already in in you know in my 30s and 40s. So uh, I'm not presumptuous enough to say that's a call by God because uh, that's too big and mysterious. Right. I felt a definite calling. It was a call to be of service, you know. It was a call to make connection and to, and to join my spirituality with the spirituality of other people. You could just feel it in your body? Yeah, sure. How old were you? See, and that's what I'm saying. Now that I know, I can't take anything he says seriously. When he say he felt something deep within him, it's like... It made me chuckle because I, I can't take anything he says seriously after 
Because I know, so it's like, once he, you know, when I first heard this, before it got to the point where I knew that he was openly gay, I thought nothing of the things that he was saying. But when I watch it back, because I know it sounds weird to me, now the things that he's saying, it sounds funny. And maybe I'm just immature. I don't know. Just how you first felt it. I, when I was like 15, I wrote a letter to my father saying I thought I wanted to become a man of the cloth, right? right? But then I forgot all about it. And so it really came back to me after I started being in recovery from alcoholism, about five years into recovery, I got the call. I thought I wanted to be a priest. Amazing. And so yeah. you've never been married? Well, you can marry in my church. Oh, you can? You sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. In fact, my church is gay friendly. I can marry a man. You can marry church. a man? In my church. Have yeah. you ever done it? I've met, you may, I've officiated at the marriage. But you never married one? No, I've never been married. Oh, okay. And um, <laughs> no children or anything? No. Do you regret not getting married, having children now that you're older? Well, and I'm gay. You're gay? Yes. You don't look gay. We come in all shapes and sizes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so you are gay? I'm gay. I didn't know you were gay. Yeah, well, I just told you. How did you become gay? One doesn't become gay. One is born that way. Does God know you're gay? I believe so. Did he make you that way? I, that's my opinion. You think that God made you gay? I have no, you know, I don't, I don't know the, I'm not going to be presumed to uh, 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 plumb the depths of the, of the most high. But yes, I've, I've been gay as long as I can remember. Jesse said, and what so the? Have you been with men? Of course. Like sexually? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's mind blowing. This is, this is mind blowing for you? Yeah. Why is that? Because I never expected said, a, a priest <laughs> and a father of Epiphany Church to be gay. That you're, you sounds don't like you're gay. coming from the assumption, what, what's look gay mean? You know, switchy and soft looking. <laughs> really? And that's what you call stereotyping. Oh, but That's called, uh, that's like if I were to say to you, well, you're black, where's your fried chicken? I was at the house and I can't wait to get home to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. That's amazing. So, are your, does your, do your congregation know that Absolutely you're gay? Absolutely, they do. That is mind-blowing. And so you think that God made mistakes? Um, that's a big question. Um, you're talking about everything that is, that is involved at the, not only at the bottom of this universe, but whatever, ever, what other, uh, whatever other inner universes exist. So uh, I would say that um, I don't think actually that force that we call God makes mistakes, no. Really? And so... But uh, actually also, I believe that things unfold in a moment for us and that so that, you know, time itself is an illusion. I mean, we're not, you know, that, that, that so um, how... how the power of the universe uh, experiences all that, I, I have absolutely no inkling. Oh, okay. So now I see a little gate in you. Good. When you did this, I saw it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, but I do think that he did a good job answering that question. It is better to... I can appreciate when people say they don't know, right? And I think some of the fear that comes with uh, when you have somebody that is openly gay, and I'm not saying this guy personally because I've never seen any of his sermons or see him working, but I have seen other pastors that were openly gay. And the way they delivered a message is very it's like the like uh like to that simple question they might say okay well and i know before he said what well, god made him how he is and stuff but like when it like that question uh did um 
do God make mistakes? They might find that they take sometimes they I've seen them take advantage of questions like that to try to push that. Uh, well, no, God don't make mistakes. He made the gate, you know, and they try to push that agenda on that person and they try to sway people. And so they preach God's word, but they'll preach it from their own pers- on from their perspective. And um, that's dangerous, you know, um, replacing God's word with their perspective of God's word. And that's dangerous. And for me personally, that's why I would not ever want a pastor who was uh, gay. I just wouldn't. And I went to a big church. It was a very big church. As a matter of fact, the guy, you know, the pastor of that church, he, his father was a pastor. And his father had a mega church as well, just like him. And I never forget the moment when sitting in church and listening to this man preach. And this guy was an amazing pastor. He really was. And I, I remember in my spirit noticing when the message it started changing he it's not like he was making up stuff that was in the bible or nothing like that he was saying the things that were in the bible that was in the bible but the way he was saying had changed i didn't know what it was but i could feel it like eh, some different some off He's, you know, it just felt weird. It felt different the way he was preaching that. I was like, why did he say it like that? He's not being, you know, firm. He seems more loosey goosey with the word. Like, you know, he was just saying things. Like I was saying before, that suggestive speech. And sure enough, about. A year and a half, maybe two years, but not too long. It's like maybe a year, two years, whatever. His wife and him came in front of the church. And they told everybody that, hey, you know how you think we're married? Well, guess what? You know, we've been divorced for a year. He told everybody that. You know, he was actually gay. He's always been gay. But I guess because, you know, his father being a pastor, having his own mega church and trying to live up, you know, to his dad's society, what what he feels that God wants. You know, he went on ahead and still got married. They had, I want to say, maybe four or five kids. But I guess he had enough. So. He, uh, they announced it. He remained a pastor for a little while after that. The church, I believe, is still up and running. I mean, I stopped going. And I think I ran into him one day. I was out with my, I was out with my wife. I don't think we weren't married yet, but we was out on a date, was going to the movies. And I actually ran into him and he was with his then husband. So, you know, um, I definitely know from experience and I'm not saying everybody's the same, but I know from experience you have to be careful when you have a pastor that is openly gay or um, I don't know if it's the openly gay or the hidden gay that's the problem but I know either way that you got to be careful with that because you can preach the truth and still put a spin on it and that's the part that you got to be careful for the spin you want to make sure that when you're getting 
God's word, what's expected of you. It needs to be straightforward. Don't nobody need to throw no sauce on it. Don't nobody need to throw no spam on it. It need to be straightforward because if you really believe in God and you really care about um, what sin is, how to get forgiveness, your salvation, um, making sure your household is good, you need it. The information delivered how it's supposed to be delivered and stuff. And so that for me personally, that's the only thing that is of concern to me. And I do. He still did, the, you know. He still has a little undertone there or whatever, but it's not too bad. But I, I do appreciate someone that can say, hey, you know, I don't know. So listen, do you think that human beings are in a fallen state? The show is called The Fallen State. Oh, I thought you were talking about the this, this state of, uh, as in the United States. No, the fallen, fallen away. state. Yeah. Uh, no. You know. I believe that we are, uh, that we are born absolutely, the, the, what is born in us is, is born whole, right? And that um, actually it is, it is what happens to us after we're born that contributes to so our... So you don't think that human beings are born in sin and which cause them to fall away from God? And no, they need I do to, not. Do you, you don't think that they need to repent and be born again? I do not, no. Really? No. So is, um, is your religion the same as Christianity or just... Yeah, I'm in a, the Episcopal Church, the Anglican Church. But uh, you're, what you're, ta you're talking about a thing called... Um, uh, Original sin, right? Right. Well, original sin, you know, really uh, began with Saint Augustine, right? Which is about 400 years after the New Testament was written. So um, that's a formulation he made, and it came from from his own experience of conversion, right? Where he had felt uh, that his life up to the moment of his conversion had been a life filled with sin. But that was Saint Augustine's particular human experience. How right? old are you? Uh, 68. So are you going to be like gay all your life or will this pass? <laughs> you, know, you know the answer to that as well as I do. But most are you going to be black all your life or is it going to pass? But being gay and being black is different. It's like... No, it's not, my brother. Black is a skin color, but gay <laughs> is like an abnormal lifestyle. Is that what you believe? Yeah, you can overcome it. No, I'm afraid that's, uh, that's wrong. Uh, so why so would we're God... not here to talk about sacred resistance. We're going to talk about Let homosexuality. Me, I'm, no, I'm just stunned that you're gay. I didn't know that. I didn't read it. One last question about that. Why would God make lesbians and gay men? Why, what was the purpose of that? Why did God make zebras? But how about lesbians? What was, what was the purpose of that? To uh, multiply. To multiply to make more Have zebras? Have sex and make more why zebras. Why do we need more zebras? To keep the earth clean and do what zebras do. <laughs> but you don't know why God made lesbians. I don't know why God made zebras. I don't know why God made you or why God made me. Amazing. If you say you know it, I know uh, why I'd say God you're made probably me. being a little presumptuous. No, he made human beings to create love. And he probably made zebras to make to, so that's why he made gay people. Amazing. I'm really I had no idea. Oh my God. Oh. You could tell he was getting a little irritated with Jesse, you know, but, you know, one thing I don't like is that um, you, you know, that you being a gay priest is like a, like a wow. So you, you should be prepared for somebody to ask you questions. Like, don't, don't be like that, man. Don't, don't act like you annoyed because somebody wants to ask you a question. You know, it's kind of a it's kind of a big deal still, you know, that. Hold on, you a gay priest? Somebody some people <laughs> some people say, you know, it's almost necessary for you to be that if you are a priest, you know, because of anyway, y'all seen the news and stuff before with them priests and everything like that. But um 
Anyway, uh, appreciate you all for tuning in. Uh, appreciate, man, all the support and stuff that I get. Uh, as always, make sure you drop a comment down below. Join the conversation. Let me know what you think. Is it still a big deal for a pastor or a priest to be gay? Do you think that they can be? Can they at least, you know, work in the church? Comment below. Let me know what you think. Risky out. Risky behavior.